If there's been a constant in Pierre Polyev's messaging since he became leader of the Tories nearly a year ago, it's a focus on affordability or a lack thereof, really. As you heard, he faults government policy for most, if not all, of the cost of living crisis. So what would the Conservatives do instead? The party's finance critic, Jazraj Singh Hallen, is here to talk about just that. Hi, Mr. Hallen. Good to have you with us. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate you making the time. I, I wanted to start off today with actually an, an accusation I heard Liberal ministers who were updating Canadians on the status of wildfires made against you, your party, and your leader. The Liberals said that your party's axe the tax rhetoric specifically couldn't be more out of touch with the reality of climate change, the prevalence of the wildfires that we've witnessed over the summer. Do they have a point? Uh, absolutely not. Look, the reality is that this carbon tax has done nothing to bring down emissions and it's done nothing to help the Liberals meet their own, uh, their own climate targets. It's made everything more expensive, gas, groceries, home heating, but it's done nothing for the environment. We will axe that carbon tax because we need to bring the cost of food, the cost of, of the fuel down. And we will actually have a plan to, to, act, to bring down emissions, and that's going to be through technology and not taxes. With all due respect, how do you know that the carbon tax is not working? Uh, we, what we proof know. do you have? Well, let's take a look at some of the claims that the Liberals made. They said that more Canadians would get back than what they pay into it, and the public budgeting officer proved that that was wrong. More Canadians will pay more into it. They also implemented a second carbon tax, the clean fuel standard, which is just another carbon tax 2.0. That's going to be... Um, all across Canada to all, all Canadian families, and there's going to be no rebates on that. So everything is getting more expensive. But they my question, with, re with all due respect, was how do you know that it's not effective? For example, usually, uh, you know, for example, in BC, when it's being studied, the carbon tax there, car the, the emissions would be 5 to 15 percent higher if, in the absence of that carbon tax. How are you able to measure in the negative kind of how, how what proof does your party have that the carbon tax is not and will not work in reducing emissions? Well, the, the, it's clear it's not working right now. And we've got to remember that the Liberals imposed this tax and they sold it on the premise that pe people would get more back than what they paid into it. And that was false. They also said it would help to reduce emissions. That was not true. They said it would help them meet their, their targets. That's not true either. But how do they, you know that's not true? The, target, the targets are 2030 and 2050. Well, they haven't met them up to this date. Because it's not 2030 and, or 2050. And how much more expensive does gas, groceries, and home heating need to go? before they even try, they can come close to meeting a target. It's not fair to Canadians that are struggling with, with their paychecks being stretched out more than ever because of the cost of housing. And then they, when they go to the grocery store, they see the, uh, the cost of everything going up. I mean, the Liberals are with this carbon tax. They're taxing the farmer who's, who's producing the food. They're taxing the, the person who's transporting the food. And then the, the store that's selling the food, the, the, it's gonna be, there's a carbon tax on top of that. At the end of the day, Canadians are paying more for this and there is all economic pain and no environmental gain. I, and I certainly take your point that Canadians are feeling the pain of it. I've been in Atlantic Canada in the past few weeks. I've listened to people out there who are very upset about the additional cost. But it's not entirely accurate to say there's no money coming back to them. There is a rebate. You probably get it four times a year as well, right? Uh, that, that is deposited in, into people's accounts. Uh, also, the, the claim that it's not doing anything in the environment. Again, you haven't provided me with any evidence to that, right? Like, how do you, you're, you're telling Canadians right now this is a terrible tax because it's making your life entirely unaffordable and it's not working. But you have yet to provide me or Canadians watching tonight with proof that it isn't working. So let's be clear. The Liberals claim that more Canadians will get back in rebates than what they will pay into it. This is the claim the Liberals made and supported by the NDP. Their own public budgeting officer proved that wrong in his report Only that recently came out. Only for the top, top income earners. The uh, lower income earners do get the money on, back. I read the report. I a majority the of Canadian households, a majority of Canadian households will pay more into it than what they get back. It's very clear inside that report, and it's not just for the top earners. This is across the board. Second of all, if if this tax was working, then why have emissions gone up? I think the Liberals need to be proving that on how that this carbon tax has brought emissions down. It has not. And actually what we need to do is we've, we're seeing more and more that energy cost is going up. The reason for that is because of bad liberal bills that they brought forward, such as Bill C-69, that doesn't let more projects get built. We need to produce more energy. We need to produce more low carbon, responsible energy here in Canada so we can bring proper paychecks to our Canadians and give that product to the rest of the world to help bring down global emissions. I just want to unpack a little bit what you're saying there for, for people listening because 
When you flag, for example, the parliamentary budget officer and his analysis, he freely admits in that analysis that what he didn't take into account was the cost of climate change. And I wonder from your party's vantage point, you clearly see an imperative to produce policy suggestions on the issue of affordability, but yet you have no policy suggestions, specific policy suggestions in addressing climate change. Aren't the effects of climate change and the issue of affordability as interconnected as any two issues can be? We're going to be doing both things. Through technology, we're going to not do it through taxes like the Liberals and the NDP have, uh, have been doing. What we're proposing is that we need to get more of our low carbon, responsible energy, and good paychecks for our Canadians here, and take that product, whatever it is that we're going to be making here, and give it to the rest of the world so we can help lower global emissions. So your climate plan is to produce more oil? Our plan is to is to produce more of what we can make here in Canada. We know for a but fact. How will that lower emissions? Will, will your goal be to lower emissions here in Canada? Like there are no specifics to your power to your uh, plan. Exactly. Yet you say technology. So, I don't know what so that means. So our let's give the example of Germany. Germany's chancellor came to Canada for our, our product. They said, "Give us your liquefied na natural gas." Trudeau, Justin Trudeau, turned around and said. Uh, there's no business case for that. Where did they turn around? They turned around to Qatar to get their energy and they built their own station for liquefied natural, natural gas within 197 days. Another problem that Canada has right now is our, our, our economic growth is one of the worst in the developed nations and on top of that our permitting is 64th in the entire world, second last. So we need to boost this, this productivity. How, what, what we could have done if we were uh, responsible, if we had a responsible government is that we should have been able to find that business case and give our liquefied natural gas to Germany. What that would have done is replaced a dirty dictator oil that's coming from Qatar or other places that helps to cripple those uh, you know, regimes that are around but, the world. Okay, but oil and natural gas are two separate things. And, and to your point, I interviewed Chancellor Schultz. I, I interviewed him asked him many times about LNG. I understand what you're talking about with respect to that, but that doesn't answer my question, which is, if you, if you feel there is an imperative to put forward a, f a plan around affordability and the cost of living, I'm not clear on why your party does not feel an equal imperative to put forward a specific climate change plan. You have not addressed what specifics you would ever put on the table. Yeah, well, number one, we're going to axe the carbon tax. Obviously, like I've said repeatedly, it has done nothing to bring down emissions. But that's what you, what and the cost not, is not going to What you're down. not going to do. What and, are you going to do? And what the Liberals need to answer as well today is why they don't have a climate plan. They have only had a tax plan. That's not working. Respectfully, I have questioned the Minister of Environment multiple times. I am asking you what your party will do. There are Canadians watching right now who are thinking about voting for your party, and they're living with the effects of climate change and the damage financially those wildfires, for example, has done to them. It's, I'm asking you from an affordability point of, of course. view as well, right? Look, You're not putting anything on the table right definitely. now. Definitely. So there have been multiple projects here across Canada like the, there's hydrogen projects, there's pipelines and other ways that we can reduce our emissions that could have been built. But because of bad policy by the Liberals supported by the NDP like Bill C-69, that but doesn't let those... pipelines don't reduce emissions. But doesn't, the pipelines uh, avoid our product from being transferred by trains and on buses right. or, uh, and on trucks, which emit more. So what we're, try what we're saying is all these projects Justin Trudeau had on his table these good projects that would have helped lower emissions and brought good Canadian paychecks, he cancelled them. What we need is a responsible government that understands that we need to get permitting up to date, we need to have a streamlined process for that so we can get more clean projects started and we can take that low carbon intense energy and we can give it to the rest of the world so that we can help lower global emissions. Okay, Mr. Helen, I'm out of time. Thank you very much for your time, I appreciate it. Thank you, Vashi. Jeff